Hey guys, how are you doing? So I'm coming back to you with another video in regards to the V2 Neo. Just want to give you a quick overall or overview of uh, the type of mods that I have installed on this printer so far. Uh, since I think it was one of the questions I was asked a bit ago, a little while ago. But anyways, let me go ahead and get you started. Um, first of all, I want to show you the kind of tools I keep on hand. I like to keep a couple pair of tweezers in hand for removing filament, a couple scrapers on hand, and a variety of different tools. For example, a ratchet wrench for removing nozzles, some side cutters, and some you know, pliers as well. Uh, but yeah, moving. Uh, I want to give you. Let's go ahead and start from the from the top down. Uh, starting real quick with uh, the filament holder. I did purchase one of these uh, filament holders or spool holders that actually rotates. So it has a couple of bearings in there and it will rotate to um, make the filament glide a little bit easier. We do have a filament round sensor that I routed. Um, I'm, I'm going to flip the printer around and I'm going to show you that, uh, how it looks through the back of that so you kind of know how the cable management goes. So the, the filament sensor goes through here, and I have it routed uh, through these little V slot uh, clips, I believe it's called. We do have uh, whatever this thing's called, the thing that keeps your um, lead screw um, pretty much straight or from it moving. These are controversial. Haven't found an issue with them yet after if you properly align your... Uh, your Z, your Z screw and your motor to be perfectly uh, or as close as you know um, vertical as possible. Uh, I did tell you guys in a previous video I was going to show you how to do this timing belt mod. So this timing belt mod is this belt is from an S1, and these I've made myself and printed them out. These are the uh, forgot what they're called, but. I'll leave it in the description. I'll leave the links to these in the description. I'll upload them later later on today. But if you notice, wow, that's. If you notice it has four four screws on there, and uh, they do move in sync from each other. That's me moving it right here. So it's. It's giving me okay results. I haven't really noticed a difference um, because I also have anti backlash knots installed in this one. So I'm not sure if these help a lot. So when the printer turns off, it doesn't like tag to one side or another. But I think these ones help. These ones I just installed maybe a week ago. Um, we also have these flexible uh, couplers. So these ones will just, uh, if there's a little bit of misalignment, they just allow it to move a little bit there. Now uh, with the stock, um, I forgot what they're called, but the, the, the motor mounts for the Z, the Z motors, uh, the stock ones that come with it, for some reason, uh, they, they just align really bad. Uh, for example, on the lead screw, if you notice, it's pretty straight, uh, especially because of this. But without this, uh, it's still straight uh, after installing this um, printable uh, mount that allows your motor to be able to move a little bit to the left or right so you can adjust it This would be the stand the uh, standard ones And uh, the lead screw would be leaning a little bit to the left on both actually on both sides even with the original one This is the of course the dual Z mod so with both for some reason it was leaning to the left I'm not sure if something here is misaligned or something but with this mod right here I'll link in the description I was able to uh, adjust just a little bit because it wasn't that much but that you need to adjust but up here is where it makes the difference because it was literally from the center it was like around right here like literally like just to the left side so that can cause some binding issues um, and give you some maybe some bad layer lines um, but through through the back side that's pretty much it other than just the cable management that I've done through the um, the original sleeve, I believe it's called, for the uh, dual drive uh, mod that I made uh, for this printer. So everything here is just cable management, and um, 
this is just uh, some shrink tube to keep it all nice and tidy from the back so it doesn't look like it, it kind of looks as, as stock as possible but um, other than that for the back that's pretty much it if you want I'll give you a quick overview of how I've done the cable management there so yeah I'm gonna um, flip it around and show you from the front side now all right, so moving in from the front now, uh, as you all know if you follow this channel, we have uh, the Direct Drive Extruder Mod uh, with a, a new um, fan shroud that allows you to upgrade to a 5015 fan, which improves the cooling uh, potential of the Sprinter by quite a bit, actually. So I'm going to remove this real quick, and I'll show you how I have the cable management here in the back so you guys can see. Bring the light here for a little bit. Hold on. Okay, so this is removed. Again, this is a magnetic mount, so literally just pops in. You can pop it out anytime. Makes cleaning up a lot faster and easier. I'll move it to the side. So I have this GST connectors. I forgot what size they are. I think it's 2.54 or something like that. But um, I installed these, uh, soldered them into the original cabling just to make it easier to disconnect whenever I want to work on the heat sink or something like that. Now, a couple things to note. So this is how all of my wiring went uh, when I installed it everything goes through that hole right there and out through here so it's, it's kind of tight but it, it works and uh, I did upgrade my my heat block to a I think it's a copper plated one or a copper or a copper nickel plated something like that it's quite a bit heavier than the original one but it super shiny and it's really nice looking I also upgraded to a nickel plated or copper plated I forgot what it's called but um, I'll, I'll say nickel plated nickel plated nozzle as well it's still a 0.4 now this one this particular heat block is from a uh, CR6 I believe CR6 SE and this one uh, the, the thermistor from the original one, which is I'll show you right here because I have everything here. So th this is the original one, right? Well, actually, no, this is not the original one. This one's the original one. So if you uh, all taken this apart, you know that it has uh, a little... Um, this is where your thermistor goes, and it kind of looks like this. So it's just like a tiny little bulb that goes in there and you screw it in with uh, the screw on the side. And in this case, it's it's no longer the case. It's actually a. It kind of looks like your um, your heating cartridge, I believe it's called. And actually, I have I have an extra. I'll show you here real quick. Okay, so this is the one I upgraded from Triangle Labs from AliExpress, and this is what the new thermistor looks like. Let me take it out real quick. Okay, so here they are side to side. This is the original one. It's a tiny little bulb, which works fine, but this one is capped to, I think, 260 degrees. This one's capped at 280, so it's a little bit of an upgrade. Plus, it looks like it's made a little bit nicer. And this one's capped at 280 degrees, a uh, maximum of 300 degrees, according to the description, for a short burst time, just in case, uh, I don't know, something happens. But yeah, um... But yeah, in regards to that, those are the upgrades I've made uh, so far to the heat block assembly and that type of stuff. So we also have a, pretty sure you all can tell, it's a bimetal heat break. Um, <clears throat> remember when you make this uh, upgrade to the for the uh, direct drive extruder, you still need a little bit of PTFB tubing in there, so it's in there. It uh, goes all the way to around here. Since the bimetal heat break, it uh, doesn't go all the way down uh, in regards to PDF tube. And again, this is the um, mod uh, that I have uploaded over at Thingiverse. Now, these two mods, they are slightly different. These are uh, more modified uh, to make them a little bit cleaner. Now, I'm not sure if I'll upload these. They kind of want them to be kind of unique to this printer. They're not really that different, to be honest. They work exactly the same as the ones I've uploaded. Um, but it does kind of give the printer a little bit of uniqueness, especially this. Um, on the original one, it kind of looks like this where it's all squared so basically I just added some uh, chamfers or bezels I'm not sure what it's called but anyone can do this it took me maybe like 
10 minutes to do on uh, Tinkercad. And you can modify it to your own taste as well. You want to add something extra. Um, second thing, uh, well, not second thing, but another upgrade I did was upgrade the roller wheels to these. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera very well, but they're kind of like uh, V-shaped. Um, the only reason I changed them is because I noticed that I had some flat spots on some of the wheels. Now, I'm not sure why, but uh, I'm not sure if they were over tightened, not tightened enough, uh, and they were in the factory. Because remember, these machines sit in the factory for a while before they ship to you. So during that time, they might develop a flat spot or something. Not sure. Not an expert, but it could happen. And um, let's see what else I have. So I do have two build plates. This is a standard one. I like using the, the build tech for uh, PLA. It sticks very well. So I prefer this one for PLA. And then I have a... Um, there you go. And then I have a textured uh, P. PEI pet as well. This is I use it for uh, pet G. I don't print anything above pet G yet, so it's just mainly pet G. This one's double sided as well, uh, so this one can. This is a PET uh, side, I believe. It kind of leaves your your prints with the carbon fiber finish, kind of like this. So if you were wondering how I got this finish on this uh, part, it's because of this bolt plate. I'll link it down in the description as well. But uh, for PLA and normally, this is going to be my everyday one. Now I did ruin the original uh, build tag on the on the original plate, as you can tell on the original one. It, the the build tag goes all the way around uh, to his little two little tabs right there. Uh, I did ruin it. I put the nozzle too close. Pretty much happens to everyone uh, when they get the printer. So I had to remove the old build tag, buy a sheet of this one, which are like maybe a couple dollars and put it on here. Removing the old one is quite a pain, I might add. So, we're gonna have fun with that. I've also decided to change the uh, magnetic sticker on mine. Um, why? Because I kind of wanted these holes, uh, which I found really annoying that the, 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 on the original one, everything's just one piece, so they don't, they don't leave these holes so you can um, tie in everything properly over time, or if you have to remove something, you can remove the full screws all together. Um, so I found that annoying, but I took the old one out, put a new one in, but I used some hole punches to um, put some holes in here, so they look pretty clean. Of course, we have this little handle as well, and I've also upgraded some of the, uh, of the, the, the heat bit things. So to start with, uh, I've upgraded to some silicone um, spacers or strings, spacers I believe they're called. And I've also added some insulation. It's not special there, it's just some insulation. Uh, helps your uh, build plate heat up a little bit faster and it saves a little bit of electricity over time. Apparently. Maybe a couple cents. It's not very much of a big savings or anything like that. But, um, let me think. I think that's pretty much all the changes I've made so far to this printer. Of course, and other than the, um, the professional firmware from Mr. Iscock. Again, um, the professional firmware is one of the things that uh, a lot of people looked into. I think it's what kind of brought interest to this channel. Uh, since everyone was, I don't know, I guess everyone was looking for a different type of firmware. And I'll just plug this in real quick so I can show you. Oh, by the way, I do have a Wi-Fi plug. Makes it so much uh, easier to control this one because I haven't upgraded to anything like um, Octoprint or Clipper. I'm not. I'm not really familiar with them yet. Uh, I don't have time for it. This time yet to learn about it. I know what they do and what the benefits are, but you know, kind of like the um, Sonic Pad that you can purchase. But it's not within my interest at this time because if I were to do that, I'd probably just buy a different printer like a Bamboo Lab or something like that. I got my eye out on the Creality K series that's coming out um, because, as you all might not know, um, I'm currently based in Mexico. So, uh, and unfortunately, Bamboo Labs doesn't sell their printers here in Mexico, and they don't ship to Mexico. So, if I want to buy it here, I have to go and get you know scalper price, which is like twice the price uh, than buying it in the U.S. or somewhere else. But 
This is the um, Mr. Ace Goss Professional Firmware. Um, again, the only thing that's different here is, of course, you get more features and you, you can enable the um, uh, preview of, uh, thumbnail previews um, with the latest version, which is a 2.1.3, released earlier in March of this year. So it's great. It's fairly new. And if you want any info on this, on this firmware, if you don't have it, you can go here. Uh, this is the GitHub. There's a big community behind this. Um, and um, this guy's doing great work, to be honest. This, this is probably like the best firmware out there for this printer or any or any type of uh, Ender 3 V2 style printer. This will work on the V2, on the V2 Neo in this case, and the S1, the standard one with this screen, not with the screen. Um, and it works on, I think, anything with this particular screen and, and motherboard. But you can look at the website and you'll get more info on that. There's also community discussions where you can. Uh, uh, ask or do you make suggestions or if you find a fix for something you can also do that too and this guy's pretty fast at up, uh, updating this firmware so uh, other than that um, I think that's pretty much it um, so yeah um, let me know if you guys have any questions on any of these upgrades if you want to see more in depth on what these particular or if you want to let me show you how to do any of these particular upgrades you know I can definitely try and uh, yeah, just leave your questions in the comments and um, I'll see what I can do to, to help out any way I can. I'm not a professional on this matter, by just by the way, so I just uh, like, like taking stuff apart and um, making changes to it. So yeah, you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, just put them down in the description or in the comment section below. Uh, leave a like if you like the video or uh, this printer in particular or whatever, but yeah. Uh, have a great day, guys. Bye.